So, I'm doing the uh, Missouri QSO party this weekend. Um, it's the second weekend of contesting, second weekend with my ICOM 7300. I'm finding that this, this is not a worldwide contest, of course, like last week. I'm finding that there's so much less participants or people out there um, to even talk to. Like, I've been calling CQ a lot. Now, my setup isn't the best. But hardly anybody, almost nobody, is responding. I just decided to change bands, and for me it's a pain, because I have to go outside and tune the super antenna, which is really designed to be portable. And I'm using it as a base station, so I have to go all the way upstairs and outside, tune it, and then and then use a antenna tuner. And I just decided to go up to 17 meters. 20 meters, actually. So, um, I'm going to include you in that. Here we go. First of all, let's just see if we can hear anything. Most people can hear me. Whenever I call, they can hear me. But when I call CQ, nobody responds. A little weird. It starts. I start to wonder, am I even getting out there, you know? Alright, so we're going to go on... It is Saturday morning, uh, Missouri and Mississippi QSO party. I have about eight contacts so far, and I've only been going for about an hour, just messing around. So if we go to the scope, now I've, I've detuned my antenna for 40 meters, so I'm gonna have, I don't see anything, so I'm going to have to tune it again and see what it looks like on 20 meters. I actually just added a RF choke to it, which, and all I did was add another piece, because I don't have a, a coax long enough to create loops and go out beyond my house so I had to create another link and that might be making my signal a little bit weaker. So I'm aiming for 14.220. So this scans the SWR. I am 1.29 at 14.9 megahertz. That's too high. I need to modify the antenna. I modified it and now it's at 14.4 kilohertz. I'm going to go down. I actually want it to be better at 14.2. Okay, now with my antenna analyzer, I moved it ever so slightly up and I've got even closer. And that's as close as I want to get. This radio will tune, it has a tuner if you're close. If it's three, to one or better this will tune it if it's not it won't do it it's that simple um, and so if you're close you don't I don't use an antenna tuner I have one over here I don't use it because I have that antenna outside that's fine all right so I'm gonna go to 14.2 and now I do see some noise out there which is good Turn my power down, find a off frequency, and then tune, I can tune. You can see when I tune it, I go to the meter, the SWR is the second one up, and it's showing absolutely no SWR on this meter, so basically one to one very nice feature it's another reason why I didn't get that flex radio I don't think it had a, a tuner in it I was almost I almost got the flex 1500 I believe it was which is comparable the difference is I didn't want to carry around a laptop and the, and I actually don't even mind carrying a laptop I just didn't want to carry another power slot supply for a laptop so I could see myself being out in the field and then the, the laptop runs out of battery, and then I gotta carry another one. So that, that's why I got this radio over the uh, Flex 1500, or I think that's what it is. Um, and it also, this is 100 watts, and that one is only 5 watts. And I don't know what to expect. There is some activity.
It looks like almost solid blue, doesn't it? All that interference. So this is what it's going to be like. Either the bands are dead or there's nobody out there. Auto-tune. It's going to show you my little setup over here. I'm using this CW decoder to help me out. Um, I know CW, but I don't know it when they go too fast. But I can tell this is K0W, and this is a Missouri station that I want to contact. And I'm going to give that a try. This is the software I'm using. It All those little buttons you click there um, send CW out for you. So you can send your signal and it picks up the fields you type in there. So if you type in his call and you click on his call, it will send that message over your radio. So it's real convenient to send things real fast and easy using this N1MM software. That's Nancy One Mike Mike. If you Google that and download it. Um, so I use that uh, for contesting and you, you have to set it up. You know, it's actually kind of hard to learn. That's why I want to do a video on it, but that's the software I'm using. I'm going to go ahead and try to contact this guy because I think he's in the same contest that I'm in, this Missouri thing, but uh, he's going pretty fast on CW, so I want to be careful. I'm trying to get this guy. I think it's W0CA, and it, the band just seemed to have died. I put my power really low. I logged it. My software keeps telling me that it's an invalid exchange. I got him. I'm pretty sure I got him. I think he said SLY. I'm going to listen and make sure I got that right. That's a problem with Morse code and CW. I'm not super comfortable with it and my software kind of failed me. It wasn't it wasn't helping and every now and then you'll hear hear a weird character you think what the heck was that? It'll run two characters together. So what I have here to help me out, um, I, I get a little confused when the heat's on and uh, I'm still not that great at CW. I just haven't done it enough. So I'm using the computer to help me out. And so I turn the, uh, the transmitting off here on the Vox break in button. I turned it off so I can, I can run my commands from my computer and hear what's going on without transmitting. So like this, here's a CQ. If I want to send a CQ, this is my message using N1MM software. Okay, and you hit escape to stop. If you want to edit these, there's the exchange, thank you, 
my call, his call, repeat. All of these buttons will just do everything for you if you just click on them. That way if I if I can't key and I panic, I can just hit the button and say thank you and just, you know, I, I just want to get it out there and try again harder next time. But if you want to, first of all, you have to fill out these fields, KQ9L599599. Then these buttons will know what his call is, what his um, exchange is, and all that. So that's how you can use these buttons, kind of like uh, form fields. They kind of fit it, fit for you. And if you want to change something, you right click on it, and you go to this screen, and you pick the one that it's on, F1, F2, F3 and it has a name, a comma, and then the thing that it types. So, for example, F3 has, it's called thank you, TU, and it says, I put TU, and then I put GL for good luck. So, let's hear what that sounds like. If I click thank you, thank you, good luck. If I wanted to change that, I'm going to say good luck, old man, old man, old man, just for, for example. I hit save, now I hit F3, or click on the button. Old man, old man. So that's how you can quickly and easily uh, modify your settings so it will automatically do it for you. And I noticed that the other guys were sending uh, for Mo Cuso Party. I didn't know this, but they were sending M-O-Q-P and that's like a shortcut for saying this is a Missouri QSO party I didn't know that but I was able to come in here type MoQP and now I can call CW by just hitting the button so that would sound like this you can also speed it up so let's speed it up to 22 and here we go here's my CQ So effectively, I could do everything in this contest from the computer. Um, I also use this, like I showed you, this is my uh, decoder. It actually doesn't work very well. It, it, the signal has to be good, you have to click on it, and it, by the time you get it all done, they've moved, they've moved past where you need it, and it's only good probably for long conversations, so you gotta be ready with a pen and paper to get it. Um, this is gonna be my notepad. I'm gonna call CQ a few times and see what happens. 